this is something that's on my watch list. So it's kind of too early to know exactly what this is doing and how bad it's going to be in our area, but it seems to be spreading pretty fast and popping up in places where it never was before, which obviously for me is a red flag. And in some other parts of the country uh, where this has been established longer, it's already recognized as an invasive problem, both invasive in your garden and your yard if you choose to plant it, but more kind of concerningly spreading out from there into the woods. Uh, so uh, it kind of looks like somebody plopped a house plant um, outside uh, and, you know, it, it seems out of place. And so you might be tempted to leave it or to purchase it and plant it because of that. But I'll give you a couple reasons why you don't really want to. Uh, so, you know, here's another kind of close up picture of it. And it's a perennial herbaceous plant that's native to Europe. Um, and it leaves out in the late fall and it's evergreen through the winter. So this is what it looks like right now and over part of the winter, uh, which, you know, that's kind of eye catching. And we don't have a lot of things that do that. But then it will die back in the summertime after flowering and it doesn't look good then. Um, so that's one reason why you might not want it. But also another reason is that is toxic. All parts of this plant are toxic. We were talking about uh, poisonous and venomous earlier. Uh, this is something that not only would you not want to eat and not have animal eat, but it can cause skin irritation when it's being handled as well. So another potential concern. And here you can kind of see uh, one of the reasons why I am concerned about it, this is um, a natural area that I work in, and you can see this neighbor's yard where they would planted it uh, in one spot, but it's just kind of filling in all along this fence and now finding it all over that natural area. So it is spread by seeds and by little tubers, little roots um, that are moved around by uh, wildlife. Um, I think squirrels really like them, um, but probably other things too. Uh, so just a little bit more on identifying Italian arum. I mean, it really stands out. It looks like a houseplant has been growing outside. Um, uh, it has really attractive triangular leaves that can have really beautiful variegated patterns. So here you can see this uh, venation, kind of white venation on it. Um, its leaves might be kind of maybe arrowhead shaped um, and uh, those will come out, uh, you know, late fall and right now through the winter, it'll, it'll be um, uh, shiny and green and glossy. And then in uh, just a little while, so early summer, uh, late spring, it will flower. And they have this spathe and spadex flower that's kind of like what you'd see in Jack in the Pulpit, right? Um, so you've got, this is the flower. Um, and then that develops to these tiny little fruits that start out green, but then over time, they'll turn this uh, bright uh, orange and it can be attractive, but again, animals are gonna take those seeds and move them around. And uh, in addition to that, you've got the root system. So this is just a very small Italian arum um, that I pulled up. And you can see that underground, it's got all these tiny little nodules that are really easy to displace. And some of the research I've been doing shows that even just one of those little tiny nodules um, can start a whole new plant. So it's something that you definitely want to be on the lookout for. Uh, and not spreading that around unintentionally. And so here's just kind of another photo of from one cluster, I got dozens of these tiny little tubers that could all start a new infestation of Italian arum. And another uh, name that people use for Italian arum is lords and ladies. It is something that you can find for sale and find marketed. Um, so I think it's important to be aware of that this plant might not be as innocent as it seems. So if you are seeing this pop up, um, in your land, in your neighborhood, um, what should you do about it? First, I really recommend preventing its arrival. And that could be preventing its arrival. You know, you don't want to move around these tubers to new area. You want to be careful in moving soil around if it's a problem. But also not moving around, don't buy it. You know, you can see it for sale um, in all sorts of uh, catalogs and online. And, you know, it makes it sound like this really great plant with these beautiful um, uh, fruits that develop um, and foliage, but 
you'll notice that the reviews are kind of low for this one, right? And if we were to dig into that, what we'd find is a whole bunch of people saying, this is an attractive plant, but it is extremely invasive and should not be planted. So this one, an interesting plant and is now popping up everywhere in my garden and yard. And, uh, you know, Roundup doesn't work and I'm having to dig it up. Um, so just pointing to how challenging it is to get rid of it once it's established. So just don't plant it, stop it from establishing to begin with. Um, um, and, uh, you know, I really advise you to have some caution with that one. And then if you do see it, and it's just like a tiny little pocket of it, I recommend uh, digging it up. It's got those tiny little tubers and, uh, you know, bulbs. Um, so you want to make sure not to pull it up because those will dislodge and stay in the soil. But, you know, dig that whole thing up. Um, don't put it in your compost. Put it in the trash uh, because that will just spread it further if you're moving it around, digging it up. Uh, that way. All parts of it should be sealed in a, you know, garbage bag and make sure to wear gloves and protective clothing while you're doing that because again, it does irritate uh, your skin uh, if you're touching it. So that's kind of my first uh, recommendation. Now there are some possibilities for using herbicide with this, but really there's not a lot of information on the best way to control it because in part your herbicides might kill that foliage, but they might not kill those tubers which are so key to its reproduction and spread. So you're much better off uh, preventing its arrival and, uh, you know, digging it up if you can, rather than herbicide. Um, if you are using herbicide, it's got a really waxy cuticle. So you want to make sure that um, you use something that'll penetrate that waxy cuticle uh, and repeat that as necessary to kill that plant because it'll keep coming back up from that root system. So again, this is a plant to watch for. It's not necessarily one that's you know well established in our landscape, but it's on my radar and I want it to be on yours too because I see it popping up in more and more spots. And if you've got it planted in your yard, now's a great time to dig it up, trash it, and plant something uh, better going forward. Uh, so with that, I just want to wrap things up and encourage you, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm always on the lookout for new invasive plants, although I never like finding them. But as they do come up, uh, or if you're seeing something weird in your woods, uh, reach out and let me know.